The Fantasy Rutgers Playoff Challenge is in full swing, and oh boy, is it getting spicy. And we have a tri-scoring machine joining the show as well to talk about his 2022 Major League Rugby season. The Fantasy Rutgers Show starts right now. Where rugby and the world of fantasy sports collide. Welcome to the Fantasy Rucker Show, bringing fantasy rugby to the masses, talking all things rugby from the MLR to leagues around the world. We're on top of it. Headphones on, pads off. This is the Fantasy Rucker Show. Now, here are your hosts, Ryan Yee, Matt Yee, and Devin Vanderpool. What's up, everybody? This is episode number 23 of the Fantasy Ruckers Show. Thank you so much to our Fantasy Ruckers League members. Thank you so much to our Fantasy Ruckers community members and everyone else tagging along on this journey of making fantasy rugby a reality in the MLR. As always with me, Devin Vandy Vandepool, Matt Yee, I am Ryan Yee. Guys, we got a challenge to talk about. We got a special guest on the show. But before we get to any of that, how are you guys doing on this lovely Tuesday? Tuesday, lovely Tuesday. Oh my God, oh, we're just at the start. Tuesday. <laughs> on this lovely Tuesday, boys. I'm just feeling good on this Tuesday because you know that boy's on top again. You know, it's going up. I, I don't know. I, I don't know where that that accent came from, but yeah, a lovely yeah, Tuesday. Hey. Um, I guess we're going to finish really the rest of the podcast. In that. <laughs> no chance. Absolutely no chance. But uh, yeah, you guys, uh, you guys ready to talk a little bit about fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge. You talk ready to talk a little bit uh, to a very special guest on this show. Um, it's been, been a fun one. It's going to be a jam packed episode here. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm feeling above everybody else. <laughs> oh my God. That's gosh. just, that's oh. about it. Only gets on top for a split second and his ego just split doof, right to the roof. second. Split second. It's been a full three days at at this point. <laughs> Yeah, no, we we mentioned the word challenge. We can't, we don't even have enough time to introduce it to the people. And no, that's already no. coming out with uh, with all the heat already at the top. And he's taking uh, no breaks or no time at all at uh, making sure everyone knows that he's at the top of the Fantasy Rutgers Playoff Challenge. We're going to break down those rankings and uh, give you all the latest when it comes to that challenge that we've got, been getting a lot of support with. So it's been a lot of fun so far. We're going to break that all down. But before we get to that, make sure you are following us on social media media at the fantasy ruckers make sure you're subscribing here on youtube or wherever you get your podcast you'll be first to know um, anything related to the uh, fantasy rugby in the mlr and you'll also be the first to know if fantasy mlr ever becomes available to you you'll find out in those outlets uh guys Really, we got a lot to talk about. But before we get to, like I said, those challenges and getting to that interview, something that I want to introduce new on this show here. I know Fantasy Rugby has been getting a little bit of traction here, especially when it comes to the MLR with all that we've been doing this season. We had a successful 2022 year. You can check out last episode where we finally crowned our champion. Um, it's been a lot, a lot of fun, and it's been an interesting journey of making Fantasy Rugby even a possibility in the MLR. So I think there's a lot of people hopping on this uh, this ride and hopping on this journey and trying to figure out what this Fantasy Rugby thing is all about. So we're going to introduce a little new topic here called uh, Ask the Fantasy Rugby show and with this uh with this segment we're going to just take a question from the people just like how we got the people to choose vandy's favorite team uh the utah warriors we're gonna get the people to s- <laughs> exactly we're gonna get the people to speak out here as well and reach out to us if they have any fantasy rugby fantasy mlr related questions to so start stirring up the conversation here of making it an actual reality in the mlr and i think we'll do that by maybe answering some of the questions that people have so with the start of the segment guys and the very first thing that we're going to ask uh, you two, I guess, quote unquote experts. Um, uh, what? Part. Yeah, well, we'll see. I know your your fantasy ranking finish in 2022 has a, has a little bit of something <laughs> else to say about that. Yeah. Nonetheless, the question coming in today, this is a big topic, a huge performance in this last eliminator round. If you had the choice going into the draft in your 2023 season, because I know both of you are already looking ahead to that. Um, would you choose? Bodine Waka 
or AJ Alatimu. I know Fly Half has been okay. a big conversation going into this next season of how big of a significance they played in this last fantasy season. I just want to get your thoughts on, you know, the two basically the hottest names going into this uh, MLR playoff. AJ Alatimu coming off a big performance this past week, obviously. So there may be a little bit of recency bias, but obviously we know what Bodine Walk has been doing all season long. Just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, their fantasy ranking and their fantasy significance that you think in the 2023 year oh easy <clears throat> easy joe peterson oh, oh see, my see, that's none of why. the above this eh? is why you know we what? don't take our advice joe peterson this is exactly why you don't take our advice people all right this is seventh place this is eighth place <laughs> all right this is why you don't ask the fantasy ruckers <laughs> yeah you know what that, that's probably fair but you know okay to answer the question um Joe Peters. I'm going to go with AJ Altima, <laughs> weirdly enough. No, nah, dude, you got to stick with Joe Peters. You're allowed – you go with none of the above. It's, it's hard. I know to, that okay. – <laughs> I think – Would you, you – know okay. it, it's, you... exactly, it's exactly like in school. If they have an all – like uh, none of the above, you always choose none of the above, and you go with – Whatever the other answer was, would you would you, would you would you actually though? If you had the option, if I added Joe Peterson to the list there, Vanny, I know how much of a significant Joe. contributor to no. you he was. Would you actually go with him if you had okay. the three options? Not there? even just trying to be funny here, but like that man was so consistent week yeah. in and week out. Okay, I get it. Bodine Waka had his twenty point nights and and all that, but I mean Joe every single week got me seven or more. It felt like at least five, honestly, a minimum of five. And, and honestly, to do Joe Peterson service, I really should have added him to this list because if I'm looking at the top 10 or at least even the top five fantasy rankings from this 2022 year after 18 rounds of play, obviously we had Bodine Walker coming at the top here after the stellar 2022 campaign, uh, racking up 126 total fantasy points based off of the scoring that we had in our 2022 year. Joe Peterson coming not too far behind in third place at 104.6 fantasy points and then not too far behind that is AJ Alatimu in fourth spot with 97 and a half fantasy points. So all those guys, three fly halves rounding out that top five scoring. So really Joe Peterson should be in that conversation. So Vandy, I'll give that to you. Joe was really consistent this past year. And obviously you got to see that firsthand with him being on your fantasy roster. Matt, for you, adding him to the list, does that change your answer? Who are you going to go with if you had that option between those three guys? I mean, look, Vandy had Joe Peterson and still ended up in seven. So I'm not taking <laughs> Joe Peterson, first of all. I'm going to take Bodine Walker because, look, I mean, forget forget even the try scoring ability he that still he ends has. Up in okay? seven. All right. Forget the try scoring ability that he has. But look, he's playing for the New England Free Jacks. They put up points. The more points you put up, the more time you spend in the other team's half, the more kicks you're going to make, the more conversions you're going to have. It's just. You know, with, with tens, and I think that's something to look for to the next season. And, you know, mm. when you're looking at a tenner, if you're looking at your potential kicker, it's about, you know, let's pick the guy who's on a team that's going to set them up for kicking success. Because, yeah, they're not going to score a try every game. We know that. They're not going to score a try every game. But if they're a kicker, the chances of them kicking for conversions or kicking for penalties, it's going to be pretty high. And, and that'll be some a solid baseline of, you know, whether that's five points, whether that's seven points, you know, um seven points as we know seven points with every other guy in your team just getting one point for finishing a game boom there you go that's you know you're in the double digit something that i had a hard time cracking sometimes you know yeah well hey you no, beat that's, me that's, to it you son of a gun you, <laughs> hey, hey, you, you know i gotta it. beat myself <laughs> you, before you you said ahead of that so quick <laughs> matt can dish out all the chirps and then oh, as long yeah. as he finishes it up with chirping himself you can you never know? touch him you can never yeah, touch him Sometimes you just call me B Rabbit. That's okay. <laughs> but no, that 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 is that is that is a uh, a a really good point there, Matt. I mean obviously there's going to be a lot of moving parts heading into the 2023 year we don't know whether or not the, this new england free jack side is going to be as good as they were this year as they are next year obviously mm -hmm. a lot of moving parts a lot a lot of that is obviously reliant on the team that is around these fly halves setting them up for that kicking success success like you're talking about and hey we saw aj alatimu and we, we'll, we'll get into the full breakdown in our eliminator round recap uh in just a few uh few minutes few minutes here um but we saw that aj team was able to do it this past week against the san diego legion all from the boot throwing in a little bit of a try assist there so yeah 
we've seen it before if the team can find success and score points usually that lends itself to the fly half scoring a lot of points it's going to be uh, interesting to see how people predict that going into next year so final answers here vandy's going with joe peterson matt you're going with bodine waka strictly off of the uh the 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 skill and talent level of the new yeah. england free jobs and because Should... i know how to follow the rules of questions you know oh. i know how to follow the rules well, to be fair, that question should have had Joe Peterson in it. And that's part of the quiz loaded master's question. here job. Whatever. It was a loaded question. So, <laughs> well, that, that is uh, the new segment here that we're going to introduce onto this show. Ask the Fantasy Rucker Show. Uh, make sure you use the hashtag AskTFRShow on Twitter and on Instagram. Yeah. That's how we'll uh, peruse through these questions. So if you got a pressing question, make sure uh, you throw that hashtag in there. Tag us at the Fantasy Ruckers. Hey, even tag our personal accounts. Tag at Ye95. Tag at the Rucking Goat for Vandy. And then tag at Ryan J. Ye for me. Um, we'd love to hear questions. We'd like to, to interact with the Fantasy MLS our community as we continue to try to grow this thing it's been a lot of fun so far now with that being said uh we're going to get into the challenge recap here and give everyone what they've been waiting for uh, a breakdown of the rankings that we released yesterday uh with those top five lineup submissions but before we get to that a couple news and notes that we need to cover here a couple big news and notes that we need to cover uh the first thing is guys is that we're starting to see some international lineups within uh within north america starting to be released here and uh mainly that is uh uh, Rugby USA and Rugby Canada coming out with their summer lineups that they're going to host uh, with their international matchups this summer. USA taking on uh, on on Chile, taking on uh, in in a, in two World Cup qualifier matches, and they're also taking on the French Barbarians and Canada this uh, this summer season, taking on Belgium and Spain as well. And hey. It was really good to see a lot of MLR guys yeah. on these lineups and on, on both sides, both on Team Canada and on uh, on Team USA as well. I believe 22 Americans making uh, the USA Eagles, 22 Canadians making uh, Rugby Canada. Pretty, pretty cool to see that uh, you're seeing a lot of MLR representation on the international level, guys. Yeah, and I mean, it's not just isolated to North America, too. I mean, clearly those international players that are coming in, if you look at that Samoa squad, um, I think uh, I know Ed Fidel's on that and that Samoa squad. So a, a few guys from LA Dotinis, I forget their names, um, but but yeah, I mean, uh, it's not just isolated to the U.S. and Canada, and, and it's great to see that we're getting internationally recognized talent here as well. Um, so no, it's it's awesome, and it's really a great look for the league. Yeah, and I must say too, um, we did there. There will be the interview with Jack McRogers that we've been alluding to um, in this episode later on here in about uh, thirty minutes time. But uh, we did this interview before this lineup was released by Team Canada today, and we just missed it. But we saw the name on the lineup, Jack McRogers, getting his very first Canadian selection. So we wanted to just give out a congratulations to Jack McRogers for cracking uh, cracking the international. Side for the uh, very first time wasn't able to mention that to him obviously because we were not aware once uh, while we were doing that interview but here we're giving out the congratulations to him it's really 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 cool to see that uh, not only I guess a a local boy Matt that you played with um, that you have a, a close relationship with but also a friend of the show uh, cracking up the uh, the the Canadian line uh, Canadian lineup and we also must add Mike Smith to that list too on the San Diego Legion he also cracking that uh, yeah. that Canadian lineup for this summertime time too Thanks, as well um yeah friends of the show making the, the canadian lineup boys it's it's really cool to see or two guys on my squad making the list fair enough correlation i you know vandy's uh, the rucking goat team to uh becoming a canadian international there, go. there might be a little I, bit of know, i just rep the boys man i'm in <laughs> here to rep the boys and to support charity maybe both. Hey, vandy hey, maybe Wilson made it to the usa squad Right, you have Mitch Wilson, no? Yeah, he did have Mitch Wilson. Yeah, Mitch Wilson 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 made the USA squad. Supporting the boys. You know what? Maybe in addition to uh, the 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 MLR 
uh, push that we're going to get Ma- uh, Vandy ready to train for that we talked about <laughs> in our interview with Jack. Maybe his backup calling is talent evaluator because maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe he has a spot. For, so for all the international squads. There it is. Exactly. I don't know. He drafted, he picked up Jack McRogers. He picked up Mitch. He drafted Mitch Wilson and hey, they're both cracking, uh, cracking uh, international lists here. So hey, maybe uh, Vandy, we found your, uh, your secret talent here in uh, rugby you know evaluation. Any sport, I just have an eye for talent. That's just straight up what it is. Yeah, I don't have an yeah. eye for fantasy points, obviously, <laughs> but talent. Close enough, close enough. And then, uh, so that was that. Really cool to see, like I said, a lot of MLR guys uh, making the international squads there and representing uh, the North American Professional League on an international level. Really, really, really cool to see. And then obviously the news that we need to touch on that uh, that has been obviously the big talking point over the past couple of weeks. Not necessarily any new updates, but since the last time that we released this podcast, um, the MLR coming out with, I guess, a new new updated statement a bunch Matt, of words on... on the screen that's what they came out with they came out with say, a bunch Matt, of words as soon as ryan just even began talking your face just dropped like <laughs> boom <laughs> they put 50 words on the screen and it all said nothing Absolutely okay. Nothing. Well, let, let me just read to the people what the that that screen actually oh, read with, and then Matt, you can come in with your reaction yeah. on what this means let for the Matt league and how off. you interpret it. But the MLR coming out in a tweet on June 10th, they say league update. Uh, the MLR is dedicated to protecting the integrity of rugby competition in North America and continuing a league-wide model that will grow for decades. While these penalties are disappointing to the fan bases, MLR ownership remains committed to maintaining the success of this league. League. Round one of MLR's championship series begins this weekend, and we look forward to a hard-fought and entertaining postseason. That is from the MLR's commissioner, George Killebrew. They cite, obviously, um, a failure to cooperate with investigations being handled, um, you know, obviously alluding to the disqualification of the Gilgronis and the Giltinis. Really, everyone has really on the same page with this. If you're a part of the MLR community, still really not much clarification on necessarily exactly what happened. A lot of speculation, a lot of rumor, a lot of things circulating the MLR community circles. But with all that being said, and yes, like I said, all these are allegations and nothing is set in stone. With all that being laid out for you there, Maddie, what is your reaction to this whole debacle as of right now on this Tuesday? You know, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll give them credit. All right. For the Go Gronies, oh, they gave us about, tough for you, you know, they gave us a little taste of what it was. All right. They gave us a little taste that it was something to do with uh, compensation, something surrounding that um, of players. I believe that that was part of their statement. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan. But with the Giltinis, I mean, that's where I really am just like, so they're saying that their failure to cooperate with an investigation should be punishing the players. Is that basically what they're saying? That a failure to cooperate with an investigation regarding another team that's from that, that's owned by the owner, they should punish the players for that. Why are the players being punished? And this is what I talked about that, that if this offense or whatever that, they, that the allegations or whatever it comes out to be, isn't necessarily something that actually affects what's on the field. I mean, not cooperating in an investigation. Is that a, does that really like does that affect the the play and the talent that's on the field if they're keeping under the cap which obviously we don't know um why should the players be punished for that the guiltinis from my point should be in the playoffs and 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 they shouldn't be punished for what their owners has failed to do essentially and mr gilchrist i mean just another thing shame on you a little bit you know just take take some on the shins just because if if you're putting your teams at risk to be in the playoffs and to be in these finals, then you're not thinking about the boys. Ultimately, right, and Vanny, I don't know do you, if you have something to add. Like, it's obviously it's a touchy uh, subject, and there's still the a lot is, that we're still, yeah. Like, obviously, obviously, Maddie feels the type of way being being a player, but at the end of the day, it's a business, and and you could you could look at a lot of businesses being um, uh, kind of a cease and desist. Oh, it's very similar. And now employees are out of necessarily work, right? You could look at it kind of the same way here. It's not necessarily the players. Uh, obviously, something's being taken away from them, but it's right. more just a cease and desist to the business. If that prolongs, if they win a championship, it gives 
you know, benefic- uh, the gu- Guiltinis are in the beneficiary of everything. They're nipping it in the butt them. now before it turns into exactly. anything so, bigger. Yeah, I, I get that. And I mean, I'll, I'll just leave at that because obviously we can go on and on here about yeah. speculating what could have happened, what should happen, what we, we still don't know what exactly happened. Like, no, and, no, no one has come out with I that. Think it would have been better for them to just not say anything. I mean, wh- what do we know more now that we don't know now? I mean, if anything, this just stirs up more conversation because now now i get a little bit of glimpse of what it could be when really it could have just been okay fine you're not going to tell us anything whatever i'll get over it let's enjoy the first round of playoffs but right i mean this statement was again like i said said at the start when we first started talking about it it was a bunch of words on a paper a bunch of words on a post that really meant absolutely nothing and and i'll just leave it at this guys i'll just say that in my opinion whatever wherever you sit on kind of whether you side with how um you know the mlr is approaching this or whether or not you're more pro team on maybe you you're a fan of the guilty news you're a fan of the gilgronies and you're agitated because you don't know i couldn't even imagine being a guiltinis or gilgronies fan right now and being like what the heck is happening right now i don't know why my team is not competing in the playoffs i know that my team that i cheered for all season long can beat these teams that are in the playoffs yeah. competing right now and i don't know why that's not happening it would be tough right i I don't know how i would feel because that obviously has never happened in any sport for me um but i can't imagine it's a good feeling but with that being said i will say that a lot of this issue stirs up from the fact that we have an owner that owns two teams in the mlr and has it seems like and obviously um i i don't have any exact numbers in front of me i don't have any uh, official sources on this but it seems like that he has um a pretty uh deep hand in the cookie jar for lack of better terms in terms of the decisions that are made with the mlr yeah. um in terms of how the power that he has uh with regards to rugby in north america and with all that coming together and with him owning two teams i think this just becomes a kind of a, a side product or a side consequence of kind of yeah. that being an issue from the start so how yeah. kind of this kind of all plays out in the weeks to come obviously we'll eventually get some clarification when that actually yeah. happens we're not exactly sure but nonetheless uh i do believe that at some point uh we will get clarification from the league because i think it is vital especially in the position that the mlr is how it's kind of on the uptick right now it's trying to grow it's trying to really establish itself within the north american sports scene i think this is a very pivotal moment for the mlr to get some clarity behind this and make a decision um that will benefit itself in the long run and for its fans as well who have been a a big part of the growth of the fans of at the MLR so far um, within the five, six years that it's been established. So, yeah. And that's, I mean, I mean, that's just what happens when you own two MLR teams and you sell a pretty mediocre beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> We'll just leave it at that. So uh, though those are the latest news and notes uh, that are around the league. Obviously, there'll be more updates as uh, the week goes on as we approach the conference finals here. I, but actually, as of- I've got a little bit of news. So I, I just just to kind of bring something quickly up and to end the news and notes on a high note. I think I figured out Russell Wilson is a New, New England Free Jack fan. I think he watches the MLR. You want to Why? know my story Why? behind this? You want to know? You want to know what I figured out? Okay. All right. New England Free Jack limited. before the season started, all right? I think it was January 14th. They pinned a tweet, okay? They released their 2022 jerseys. They have at the bottom, really sneaky, you know? Hashtag, let's ride. Let's ride, okay? All right? Later on, all right, Russell Wilson gets traded to the Denver Broncos. If you didn't know, Russell Wilson, the QB in the NFL, gets traded to the Denver Broncos. Crap team, do. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. So Russell Wilson comes out with this saying, right? Broncos country, let's ride. Where did he get that from? There's only one place and only one source that I can think of where he got this from. Free England, free Jack country. Let's ride. Let's, let's ride. ride. Let's well, Matt, you have to say it. You, well, now you you have to say it like Russell Wilson. Unlimited. Let's ride. <laughs> no, do it again. Do it I'm again. Unlimited. Let's ride. Now you got to do it again, free dude. Free Jack country. Let's ride. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen, the, <laughs> if you haven't seen the the video that went viral with Russell Wilson, it was him just saying, uh, you like that, Andy? A, a "Denver, what did what did he say, Matt? He said, he Denver said Bronco country. country. Let's ride.' <laughs> so Matt, yeah, <laughs> I, 
Let's rap. <laughs> the video went viral, and yeah, it is funny to see that the Free Jocks use that same hashtag, let's ride, kind yeah. of uh, but New kind England of did it first. promotion. But... So Russell Wilson and Team 3, you guys are clearly New England Free Jock fans. Thanks for supporting the MLR. I appreciate it. You know, keep it up. There we go. All right. Well, there's your little, if you didn't know that Let's Ride originated with the Free Jocks, now you know. the. That's why you come into the news and notes. Not for the Canadian international stuff. Not for the USA international stuff. Not not for the Because latest. NFL superstars are not, watching the MLR, people. <laughs> well, hey, DK Metcalf was out of DK practice Metcalf. not too. DK Metcalf was out that's of practice true. not too long ago. So, uh, yeah. And, hey, uh, the New England or not the yeah the New England Free Jacks are also partly owned uh, by both Nate Ebner and Patrick Chung, so that we have that too. So hey, there's a whole there's a whole conspiracy, an NFL conspiracy, the Let's Ride conspiracy that's yeah. taken over uh, the over the MLR. But yeah, that's our news and notes for this episode. We'll continue to update if anything does break throughout the show. Um, but that I think is the the biggest topics that need to be touched on before we start talking about Woo! this fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge and I, I gotta say this i am absolutely ecstatic on the support that this uh this whole thing has gotten uh when we first decided to do this we wanted or let me back up here we wanted to uh keep the fantasy rugby thing going and i got reached out to a couple people on uh, on discord in our league and they're like hey can we continue this fantasy mlr thing into the playoffs is there a way that we can continue this thing going i said hey yeah that might be a, a pretty solid idea so coming up with you know after creating uh the fantasy ruckers uh league itself and all the rules that went behind that i thought hey why not take one more undertaking here and create something uh that people can play in the playoffs and it's not just the league members that we open it nope. up to no i wanted to get everyone to get a taste of fantasy rugby in the mlr so i said hey let's open it up to the people so that's where we created unlimited the fantasy number of people. unlimited, unlimited. No, <laughs> number of uh, of people and uh yeah we got a lot of support a lot of big time uh rugby uh community members joining yep. in on this challenge people that watch the mlr significantly uh a lot of people that even watch other rugby overseas joining in on this challenge as well we'll go through them all um just really really excited to see all the support of people also being excited of the prospects of fantasy rugby being in the mlr but before we kind of get into the rankings which we released on twitter and breaking down the results and everything let, let's talk about our lineups here matt and vandy um and, and talk to the people kind of our thinkings throughout this whole process because i think it was a little bit uh, interesting how different teams and different people approached this challenge it was a little bit different than how our fantasy Rutgers league operated obviously it wasn't a draft league it was kind of a uh a, a pick em challenge for those of you who weren't aware or who haven't uh, heard about the fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge yet uh people who participated uh they sent in a five-man lineup based off of a $15 salary that they had each player was valued uh between one and five dollars based on their 2022 regular season fantasy performances uh we gave them a uh, fantasy ruckers value and then people selected those players building that $15 lineup and we were going to track that throughout the mlr playoffs and whoever has that highest total at the end wins the fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge kind of a survivor league format uh matthew's uh pointing at himself there if you're watching on the uh on the youtube video if you're listening on the podcast um yeah there there's a big reason why he's doing that but let's before we reveal why that is the case let's talk about kind of the lineups that we went with um into this uh this fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge i was super pumped because as commissioner of our fantasy Rutgers league obviously i couldn't participate in the season-long fantasy rugby league but i was able to participate in this one and i came in and i said hey the inventor of fantasy rugby in the mlr is taking his shot it's my opportunity for all you fantasy Rutgers league members that have been giving me such a hard time all season long i'm only kidding there um, being very very sarcastic they were great um i get to finally get my payback here in my lineup so i'll start with my lineup guys and then matt you want to reveal yours uh vandy you can reveal yours then as well and kind of talk through the strategies behind why you exactly selected those lineups for me i went with dylan fawcett at my front row position for four dollars antonio kitty kitty for one dollar on rugby new york for my second row back row spot 
Bodine Waka at my fly half scrum half position for five dollars. Uh, my back three center position, Wysocki Nahalo for four dollars, and then I thought it was a bargain to get Seattle Seawolves at one dollar for my set piece uh, bonus point piece. They're um, uh, totaling up to fifteen dollars. Uh, let's go into your uh, lineup before I break down the strategies here, Matt. With your lineup, what did you have? Yeah, I mean, it, saying it after you, it makes it look like I copied you. But no, 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 no. I put mine out first. Look at the Twitter. I put mine out first. I went number four or $4, Dylan Fawcett for my front row. All right. I got uh, I got Antonio Kitty Kitty, $1 as my back row, second row. Yep. Waka, uh-uh, AJ Alatimu, $5 at my fly half, scrum half position. And then I got uh, I got Waisaki Nahalo for four dollars at my back three and center position, and then Seattle Seawolves uh, as my set piece at one dollars. And yeah, I I did it first. Just no, I, I I did it first. I will say I'll give it to you. I will talk about why we kind of went with similar lineups here. The big difference, obviously, being like you said, Matt AJ Alatimu, you went with I went with Bodine Waka. We'll explain kind of the reason why there. But yeah, I really liked your strategies, which we'll get into. Before we get into that, though, Vandy, uh, what was your lineup here for this Fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge? Well, I stacked the uh, the big boys a little bit. Went uh, front row with Dean Muir. Uh, second row, back row, I went Andrew Duratalo. Um, then I had to go with Bodine Waka. You know what? I wanted to have that man all year. I'll pay the five bucks. I'd pay six if it was there. <laughs> Give me Bodine. You know what? Throwback to one of the guys on the squad, Wayne Vanderbank as my center. You know, good dude. Has been good all year, pretty much. And then, you know what? This one was uh, for Steven for the jersey. Uh, Houston Sabercats as my uh, – as my uh, – Your set piece bonus point there. My set piece. Yeah. No, that, I mean, that's a that's a good strategy there. Maybe going with that uh, that set piece and Dean Muir stack there. I mean, if Dean Muir is yeah, able to yeah. find the try line. Kind of for and, Steven. Uh, Thanks for the jersey again, homie. Appreciate there, you. There you go. But, uh, so for, uh, Matt, for payback. Don't get a big head. I'm coming for you. Yeah, right, buddy. Yeah, we'll see. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about strategies here, guys, and why we kind of went with the lineups we did. And I'll start with that. And, Matt, we talked about this beforehand, kind of what we went with. And I think – at least our thought process going through uh, this fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge is not necessarily starting with kind of the guys that you wanted on your lineup, but starting mm. with the teams that you thought were going to go far in this playoff, uh, in this playoff run here in the 2022 uh, MLR championship series. It was starting with that and then picking players that kind of fit that mold. Why don't you kind of talk about more why you went that route, especially with uh, the number of games being a key contributor yeah. in that reasoning? I mean, look, to me, it just seemed just seemed simple. You know, we picked, I mean, last week we set it on record. I picked New York to go to the final. I picked Seattle to go to the final. That means that if I pick New York and Seattle players, they're going to play three games in this playoffs. New England players, even if they go to the final, they'll only play two. Even if the New York players don't go to the final, they're still playing two. Even if the Seattle players don't go to the final, they're still playing two. So I've got no disadvantage by picking the guys on these teams because as long as they didn't lose in the first round, which I was fairly confident they weren't, they're going to at least play the same number of games as these like Bodine Walkers, the guys on Houston, the guys on New England. Um, and that's the minimum amount of games that they could play. So that's where I went with it. And it seemed to have paid off so far. Um, so that's where I yeah. went. It's well, I mean, that it, it makes a lot of sense because obviously the big risk with that play was whether or not you had the trust that Rugby New York, obviously who you went with, or the Seattle Seawolves, also the team that you kind of sided with, would they be able to get the pass the first round? Were you worried of a San Diego Legion upset, or were you worried of Rugby Atlanta pulling one out of the bag because of what you saw before? Now, it worked in your favor. Could have gone pretty south pretty mm -hmm. quick if it went the other way, but now that that has happened, that's a great point. They're going to, at the very least, play the same number of games. Even if they're able to lose in this conference final, they will play the same number of games as um, the New England Free Jacks or as the Houston Sabercats who got the bye in that first round. Um, I think there's probably a lot of people that think the New England Free Jacks are going to beat Rugby New York in that second 
second round. So kind of keeping that in mind as well. But nonetheless, uh, pretty, pretty good strategy there. The only reason why I differ from you, and I think this might be the deciding factor, or obviously it will be the deciding factor between our two lineups. And the reason why I didn't go all in, because there's a little bit of contradiction in my lineup by me choosing Bodine Waka, I feel like I'm handcuffing myself a little bit because there's no world where I'm getting Dylan Fawcett, Antonio Kitty and Waisaki Nahalo making the final in addition to Bodine Waka. I'm either getting either or. But keeping that in mind that I'm already guaranteed two Rugby New York games, I wanted the insurance of whether or not if Rugby New York wasn't going to make it into the next rounds after the conference finals. I would at least have Bodine Waka there, who could be five players on his own. We've seen him do yeah. it before, right? If there's one guy that you're going to count on that could carry you through those rounds when you have no one on that lineup, it would be Bodine Waka. So I wanted that extra insurance. But then again, that being said, you want to maximize points and maybe you going all in on your Seattle Seawolves and New York uh, Rugby New York prediction, that may pay off for you at the end. We'll see whether or not that happens in a couple weeks' time. Vandy, you uh, kind of emphasized the Houston Sabercats stack there, um, also pairing that up, obviously, with Bodine Walker. Was that the biggest kind of thing going into this, was just trying to capitalize on as many points as possible uh, between Houston and between New England? Well, I wasn't as confident as Matt, I guess, about the uh, Rugby Atlanta, Rugby New York game. I That one to me was 50-50. That could have really swung either way. So I kind of wanted to avoid that one. Um, I think New England beats either of those teams. So that's why I, I felt pretty confident going Bodine Waka, Wayne Vanderbank. Yep. And then Houston got the bye as well. That was another one. I actually had the Legion beating Seattle, if you listen to last week's podcast. Um, you know, a little bit of faith in the Legion, you know, Part of the want to be different, but <laughs> you know, e- either way, I didn't feel too confident about that. And I also think that Houston would have beat either of those teams. I think Houston is going to beat Seattle. Um, so I, I mean, Dean Muir has been a try machine in the in the past couple of weeks. Bowden yep. Waka, if New England is going to do well, if they're going to win, it's going to be through him, it's going to be through his kicks, it's going to be through kind of his is through the air kind of assists and everything. So, I mean. Yeah, I f- I'm not too worried about it yet. Matt likes to puff his chest out a bit because he stacked all his first games, but you know, <laughs> not sweating yet. Yeah, well, let, let's talk. Worried. Let's talk about that because I think Matt has been itching to talk about this portion of the show for the past uh, 30 minutes here, and he's been waiting for this moment. Um, so let's break it down and let's talk about where everyone now oh, is slotting. First place now. You can't forget to say first place. <laughs> where everyone. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. And for the yeah, when when I uh, forgot your name when you were in eighth pl- eighth place during uh, during the up. season, don't bring it <laughs> up to the new watch. But go take another two week hiatus. <laughs> let's break it all down. Let's talk about the rankings here so far in the fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge. Like we mentioned, it's a survivor style format, so there's no by all means this this still has a long ways to go. We have a lot of teams who haven't even had a guy that has played for them yet who has earned zero points. So Matt throwing up the the number one up there right now if you're watching on uh, on the youtube channel um i wouldn't be so certain if that's going to be the same thing come no. next episode but hey there's a chance and i feel like we've seen this whole thing before we've seen oh, that yeah. be on the highs oh yeah oh yes hey hey if both your teams lose if both your teams <laughs> lose you bring back that brown bag no 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 both my teams lose i still got two games in the bag and they're still scoring points aren't they? <laughs> we'll see okay let, let's Brown break bag. it all down but before let's talk about the people who are actually participating in this challenge and who are making these uh these top five submissions in addition to a lot of obviously our league members who didn't get enough fantasy rugby after after 17 weeks of a fantasy mlr regular season um we also have um <laughs> we also have people outside our league who also joined as well so just to name a few people um we got uh john Payne who joined he submitted his lineup big new england guy so he submitted literally all five new england players so kind of banking <laughs> banking on new england uh making a big playoff push here we'll see whether or not how they do against their big matchup against rugby new york this weekend a big one here brian ray of america's rugby news he was a huge or at least that site was a huge huge part of this fantasy rugby season of tabulating the stats and getting uh the latest i guess numbers 
uh, and accurate numbers, I should say. That's a big part of it. Accurate numbers onto our fantasy MLR player database. That was a big part. So he submitted a lineup as well. Uh, the, the folks over at LaRouge Rugby Podcast had a little bit of Canadian flair into mm. their lineups, making sure they were including some of the, uh, the Canadian rugby players in their lineups. We'll let you know whether or not that paid off here in the rankings. Uh, James Dealey of MLR Stats, he joined the show, uh, joined the challenge as well. Big it, stats. This guy. one scared, yeah, this one scared me because obviously a big, big stats guy. I was worried on what inside numbers he may have had that maybe have given him the slight edge into this uh, fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge. Um, also, people over at the rugby wrap up joining uh, the challenge as well. Uh, Alistar Kirsch pool of glorious rugby. He runs the, the tackle the number site that we uh, have mentioned here on the show before. He is also uh, participating in the challenge. And hey, we also had uh, Stacy Pates come in. Uh, uh, oh. all, MLR All Access. Uh, Stacy yeah. Pates also submit a lineup as well. Obviously, uh, they were lovely enough to have us come on MLR All Access during the season. So it was only fair to have her come on and join our challenge and uh, see whether or not Sorry, where Stacey. she where she falls in uh, the fantasy rugby community. I also got to add the uh, fantasy rugby geek as well, joining in on the challenge. Uh, not really uh, so far uh, a lot of the MLR content that they're covering, but hey, it's nice to see that people who are digesting a lot of uh, rugby and fantasy rugby overseas in Six Nations leagues, Premiership rugby leagues, also hearing about the possibility of fantasy rugby in the MLR as well. So all those people, thank you so much for joining this challenge. It's been a lot of fun so far in this first week. Obviously, we have a few more weeks to come. We are going to put the link to all of their uh, their good content in the description below on our YouTube and also in the description of our podcast. So make sure you have a look there and check them all out because they've all been huge, huge contributors to uh, the growth of uh, MLR, the growth of the MLR, the growth of fantasy rugby, or just the growth of rugby as a whole in uh, in North America and beyond. So really glad to have them as part of the challenge. So with that being said, let's talk about the rankings here with uh, with Matthew finally getting his moment to shine in the light. Yes, oh, yeah. Matt Yi has right now the number one uh MLR playoff challenge submission as of right now with 24 total oh, fantasy been. points. JJ Tolton coming in second with 19 points. Hey, the commissioner got to know something about fantasy rugby. I'm coming in at third with 10 and a half fantasy points. Brian yeah, Ray of America's Rugby News, like we mentioned, uh, he has four points sitting at fourth spot. And then we got a four way tie sitting at fifth spot between Rugby Morning, Fantasy Rugby Geek, Zach Landing of the Rugby rack, Wrap Up, and Alistair Kirsch Pool of Glorious Rugby, all with three points as well. But Matt, I'll throw it to you first, man. The lineup that you talked about, the strategy that you just mentioned, seems to be working, and it seems like you might be running away with this thing early, but I'm not too sure if you should get too far ahead of yourself. Yeah, I'm going to gladly get way too far ahead of myself, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's already that's already long gone. I'm already way too far ahead of myself. I mean, one thing I did notice, and just I want to point out, is the fact that, you know, the Rucking Goat and, and Vandy, I, I didn't hear your name there, man. It's... It's a tough go, eh, being left out at the bottom. Uh, you know what? It's pretty homey, tough actually. Tough go when you can't crack the I gotta top say, five, eh? my bed's still warm from the regular season. Ah, uh, there you go. So you just got to make sure make sure that you can carry it on to the off season, to the next season. Yeah, I got season. broad shoulders. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> oh, You're okay. trying to come at me with that smoke, and I ain't having it. <laughs> you can take it. After that's, this that's week, I love man. Doing it. You can oh, take it, but wait. hey, I can't wait. Hey, it's always easier to dish it out from the top, and uh, it's just a good thing that I'm going to be staying there for the rest of the, the rest of this playoff. So, oh that's my all gosh! All right, so everyone who's what? listening out there, everyone who joined the Fantasy Rutgers Playoff Challenge. Remember those words. Remember, Remember those words. Those uh, those fighting words that Matt is uh, is coming out with here on this show. Uh, just just let's let's bookmark this and let's see whether or not that stays in uh, in a few weeks' time. But uh, nonetheless, uh, if you are listening to this and you're part of this challenge, I think you got a little bit more to play for here in trying to take down the guy who is now all talk after yeah. finishing uh, finishing uh, last or second last in our uh, in our fantasy Rutgers league. He's all I mean, he's I all mean, talking hey, now. History history says that I'm gonna be last next week. So, you know, are you gonna make that happen, or are you gonna keep me up here? You know, two to my own horn. <laughs> Doing all that stuff. You don't want to hear that next week, people. You don't want to hear that. I don't even want to hear it now, to be honest. Oh, you do, though. 
You do, man. We'll see. So like I said, again, rounding out the top five in this Fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge so far, I'll say it again, Matt Yee leading the way right now with 24 total fantasy points. J.J. Tolton, who did win our inaugural Fantasy Rutgers League and got his name on uh, his name first on the official Fantasy Rutgers League championship jersey there that you can see behind me on the YouTube channel. He has 19 total fantasy points right now. I myself have 10 and a half fantasy points sitting at third spot, which I got to say uh, feels pretty, pretty good. I feel like it would have been uh, it would have been more of a disservice if the commissioner who created this whole thing wasn't in the top five i feel like that'd be more of an issue if that wasn't a thing and then obviously like i said brian ray with four points sitting in four spot and then rugby morning fantasy rugby geek zach landing of rugby wrap up and alistair kirsch pool of glorious rugby all tied with three points sitting in that fifth spot so we'll continue to keep these things updated next week we'll come out with a brand new ranking and a breakdown of all um of the Fantasy Ruckers Playoff Challenge. We'll continue to update that on social media as well at the Fantasy Ruckers. So make sure you give us a follow there. Uh, you can also join the Discord community. The link is in the description and in our bio as well to join that. It's been a lot of fun bouncing back and forth about uh, fantasy rugby, about this fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge, and also just uh, rugby in the MLR as a whole and beyond. You guys have been talking a little bit of super rugby. You've been talking about a little bit of uh, ultimate rugby championship in there as of late mm-hmm. too. So uh, yeah, lots of discussion about all things rugby going on in the Discord as well, uh, including a little bit of trash talk when it comes to this fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge so with that being said uh make sure you're staying up to date with that and use hashtag the fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge hashtag as well um to kind of get uh the word out there about fantasy rugby being a thing in the mlr so with that being said let's break down guys some of these playoff uh, performances that led to these points matt i know you want to break down a couple of these guys but we had some exciting matchups here in the eliminator round um in the mlr all right, we'll see what we'll see uh, what your reaction is. I feel like I know the the match that you're kind of have in your mind there, Matt. And we'll open up with that match, uh, Rugby Atlanta taking on Rugby New York on Saturday in the uh, the Eastern Conference Eliminator Round. Yeah, it was a little bit of a slow one. Maybe something that you'd expect from two physical teams. Uh, they were both, you know, we know Rugby Atlanta's reliance on the set piece and on their big forward pack. Rugby New York, we've seen glimpses of that uh, in the past as well. It was 9-6 to six in favor of Rugby New York in the past, or at half, I should say. But then Rugby New York pulling through in that second half off of a big try from Dylan Fawcett. That was obviously a big, big thing for your fantasy lineup and my fantasy lineup there in the in the. Uh, playoff challenge for us there maddie uh a final score 26 to 19 in favor of rugby new york i feel like the score maybe shows it was a little bit closer than it actually was at least in that second half but matt i'll throw it to you before breaking down the fantasy performance overall yeah. thoughts on a low scoring affair between rugby new york and rugby atlanta yeah and i mean one last thing about the fantasy record playoff challenge is the fact that just the cherry on top is that dylan fawcett a front row eligible player is playing back row for the first mm-hmm. half and then hooker for the second half. What an absolute menace and player of the week. But talking about the game, oh my goodness, this was probably one of the sloppiest, the, you know, just an awful game to watch. I mean, yes, it had great line speed, great defense, but New York couldn't figure out their lineup other than a couple of tries. They couldn't figure out their lineup. Atlanta couldn't figure out their scrum. So it was none of the set pieces were really, you know, providing a clean, a clean platform for any of the back lines to shift off of. And then the back lines, when they did get the ball, they just had issues, you know, catching the ball, just building phases. It seemed like the timing was off sometimes. And, and yes, you can attribute that to line speed, but, but look, those are, those are some skilled guys that are, are, are just not executing, you know, hands, you know, executing simple, simple plays that would in the past. It was just tough to watch most of the time. I mean, yeah, it's great watching Jason Emery kick off the tee, uh, which was a surprise. But it was just like you expected to see some tries, especially from the Rugby New York side. And it just never came um, until until really, I mean, until the end where they really started to try and open up. And then the last thing really to talk about this is, oh, my gosh, I, I feel for New York with Ed Fido because I don't know what his status is. But I saw some guy torpedo straight into his knee at the end of the game in extra time. And boy, could that have been avoided if they just kicked the ball out when they got that, when they stole the ball. But yeah, I mean, sloppy game. 
New York, if they play like that, they're not going to beat New England Free Jacks, but I expect them to come out. Come out, But we'll talk more about that later on. Yeah. Bandy, any, uh, any quick thoughts here on uh, Rugby Atlanta, Rugby New York? I think uh, Matt summed it up pretty well. Yeah, he, you know, I was I was really looking forward to the, uh, you know, to the playoffs and seeing all that and the fireworks that this match was supposed to be. But, you know, you hit the nail on the head, Matt. I, the ball security by Rugby Atlanta seemed mm-hmm. very poor. Uh, that one I noticed. Uh, that was pretty bad. But, yeah, I mean, you know, the mellow 9-6 half, tough to watch. But it just seemed like jitters. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It just seemed kind of – uh, guys were scared to make a mistake. When you're scared to make a mistake, you don't make the play that could win the game. So, but you know, you touched on it, you nailed it. I mean, just sloppy play by both halves, and neither one's going to beat New England if that's how they're going to play. And I, and I will say too as well that uh, Rugby New York was among uh, the top selected players in our Fantasy Rutgers Playoff Challenge. So out of all the teams that had players selected for them, we had nine separate Rugby New York uh, players selected in uh, in this uh, the playoff challenge. So that was the most, uh, the next one coming in at, uh, with new England at eight players. So obviously a lot of people outside of Dylan Fawcett, um, really a lot of people were disappointed with the, uh, the rugby New York players yeah. that they had in their lineup, because I think there were a lot of lineup surprises too. Like, like you mentioned, Matt, we didn't think Jason Emery would be kicking off the boot. Usually would have thought it would have been Sam Windsor, maybe Jack Hyden, but we've seen Emery kick before, but it was just a, a lineup chain or a lineup decision or a, 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 a kicking decision that we didn't really expect, especially in a match of this magnitude with everything on the line against a really, really formidable spot side in Rugby Atlanta. But uh, with that being said, though, uh, fantasy performances, though, on Rugby New York side, Dylan Fawcett, like we mentioned, he was a key, key part of both Matt and my lineup. I think we're the only uh, lineups, Matt, in the Fantasy Rutgers Playoff Challenge that has Dylan Fawcett in the lineup. Uh, and it's really good to see that he's not only getting uh, back a front row time he's also getting back row time which is leading him to get those full 80 minute time six and a half fantasy points like i said jason emery i don't think anyone selected him in his fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge lineup he has eight fantasy points and nick savetta on the opposite side with the negative points he got the yellow card uh, racking up the minus four points it wasn't good if you had savetta in your lineup either on the rugby atlanta side hey no one really could have predict- predicted it, but maybe in hindsight you could have. Maybe Kurt Coleman was a sleepy, sleepy p- play to have in this Fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge. We've seen him blow up for points throughout the season when he was given kicking mm-hmm. duties. I think for me, it was a worrisome idea that I didn't know if it was going to be Kurt Coleman. I didn't know if it was going to be Joaquin de la Vega Mendia. I didn't know who was going to have that kicking responsibility. So the risk was there. But hey, if you had Kurt Coleman in there at the value that he had, because I think he was either at $2, I think, um, which would have been huge value for the amount of points. Nonetheless, he's not going to have that chance anymore to rack up points. But he was able to get 14 and a half in, uh, in, in at least one match, which is just explains what we mentioned earlier, the significant power that these kickers can have in the world of fantasy rugby in the MLR. So big performance there by Kirk Coleman. Um, he was really the only point contributor there for the entire rugby Atlanta side from the boot and both scoring a try in that 80th minute as well. So uh, yeah, a slow one here between rugby Atlanta and rugby New York, but nonetheless, rugby New York moves on to go play for an Eastern conference championship, which is really, really cool to see for our boy Andrew Coe there to compete in, a, in a in a high uh, high profile match in his first season with the squad as well. Got to got to give that shout out to uh, to Andrew Coe. Uh, moving on though to the other side of the eliminator round, Western Conference eliminator round. It was the San Diego Legion taking on the Seattle Sea Wolves in uh, Seattle. Kind of a a last minute spur of events to get San Diego in there. I mean, we talked about obviously all the oh. the drama and all the stuff going on with MLR, but after San Diego seemingly had packed everything up, because I don't know if uh, you listening remembered, but the Legion had a buy in the very last week of the season, so they hadn't played rugby for uh, for a little bit here, and they were ready to call it uh, call it a uh, a summer vacation heading into the playoffs. But then they got the phone call from uh, from the MRR and said, "Hey, you're traveling to Seattle. Go get Joe Peterson back in here. Go get Mike Smith back in here. Go get the boys. We need them to play against uh, against the Seattle Sea Wolves." Um, a lot more of an entertaining matchup. I'll start with that, Matt oh, wow. uh, and Vandy. It was uh, a lot of fun to watch. But Seattle, yeah. man, 
they are looking like a side that is going to cause some issues here in the MLR Championship Series. It looks like some of their uh, their experience after having won two championships before in the MLR may be playing a role here, uh, having that experience in high key matchups. Uh, Matt, is that something that you saw here against the San Diego Legion for the Sea Wolves? Yeah, I mean, I think the stat is, is that they're five and zero in MLR playoff matches. Um, so every time they've made the playoffs, they've not lost the game yet. Um, so yeah, they clearly have the experience. Um, I expected this from them. I mean, this is maybe what you expected from RB New York, but we did. We always say like their back line is explosive. They know how to put points up. Um, they found it both ways. They scored a try off the mall. And then obviously AJ Alatimu was just clinical off the tee going perfect. And also just clinical in, in, in terms of being a playmaker and, and really the other guy as well. I mean, AJ Alatimu plus Duncan Matthews, both really, uh, two clinical guys, but it just seemed like, look, San Diego had a tough time putting down the brews. They had a tough time, you know, putting away the liquor. Uh, they were celebrating <laughs> a little, enjoying the off season. <laughs> That's all right. They they didn't have time. They they're, they're going through some injuries though. That's not their lineup. That I think. I think if they had their full lineup, guys like Matias Fryer, um, guys like Will Hooley. I mean, those guys were staples throughout for them throughout the year. And it, I think could have been a different story. But look, Seattle. That's a strong team, and they're really carrying some momentum going into this next game. Yeah, no, Seattle definitely carrying some momentum. Uh, Vanny, before I go to you, uh, I guess that was a big standout for me, was in such a high-level match, especially when you played, I guess, your last regular season game in round 17 where you had uh, Josh Henderson come out and start at fly half for you after the injury of Will Hooley. Mm -hmm. It led to questions, man. I don't know. I don't know if you move Joe Peterson into that fly half position. Such a key, key position of ball distribution, especially against a tough side like the Seattle Seawolves. I'm not sure if, you know, coming out with Josh Henderson was the right decision. Nonetheless, um, yeah, I mean, we saw we talked about the, the the cool try assist that he had in that round 17 play. So, hey, maybe they saw something in training. Um, but that was a little bit of a surprise for me. But, Vandy, uh, thoughts on kind of seeing your uh, your secondary boys outside the Utah Wars, the San Diego Legion falling to the Seattle Seawolves here in, uh, in a relatively close one? Yeah, like I was saying with the last game, it felt kind of... Uh you know, choppy, kind of brutal. And this one just felt like they were just having fun. They were pumped to be yeah. there. Didn't really expect to be there. So they kind of, it, it kind of felt like you can just lay it out on the line. Cause you know what? We weren't even supposed to be here. So it was a great game. I mean, uh, you touched on it, Matt Duncan Matthews. He had a good game. He had a beautiful try or uh, assist oh, yeah. to Ross Neal. Um, but I, I found it hilarious. I don't know what it was. I think it was at the 70th minute or something. And the announcer goes, there's three constants in life. Death. Taxes and AJ Alatimu. <laughs> and you know what, man? That guy was money. Like, Absolute good for you guys money. for picking him. That guy was clinical out there. I mean, I thought San Diego was going to get a good push going there when Reichert Hadding got the uh, got the yellow. But still, it wasn't enough to even really muster a comeback. Bjorn yeah. Basson was pretty quiet. And I, I would add something pretty quick, like just very quickly, is that I think Hokey pointed this out in the Discord uh, chat, is that what a game to come back with Osberger coming back from injury to start when Higgins has really been been mm -hmm. playing well for you guys, as well as, you know, just throw Josh Henderson for a start when Joe, Joe Peterson has had experience at that 10 position, you know, it was, it was a kind of weird decision, but Hey, uh, I think at the end of the day, it, it, it ended how we expected it to end. Uh, yeah. Right. I, right. I, I think, I think out of the entirety of this first eliminator round, I think, the better team has moved on into the conference yeah. final that at least from a consensus point of view yeah. i think it would maybe it would have been nice to see san diego legion squeak out a, out a out an upset or um you know rugby atlanta was the higher seeded team but i think both of all of us understood at least that's what we said on last show that i think rugby new york especially with all the talent that they've added over the course of this 2022 year to say the least has pushed them to at least get that respect in in that prediction of making a push here in the eastern conference side of things but yeah it's been an interesting one to say the least um some fantasy performers there yeah leave it to jason higgins even despite not starting matt i know you had him all season long but he still found the try line there uh late in the match he racked up 6.4 fantasy points don't think anyone had him in his fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge lineup uh nate otzberger you messaged mentioned it as well matt seven and a half fantasy points for him scoring an early try in the opening minutes of that match and then tavita time also finding the try line there uh in a, in a classic forward 
pickup and go five and five point seven fantasy points for the San Diego side, and then uh, and then you know people had Joe Peterson in their lineup because I think the ideology was okay. Let's pair up the like two of the most consistent guys that we had all season long, even if they're only playing one match. Let's get $5 Bodine Walker in there and let's get $5 Joe Peterson in there and let's hope for a Joe Peterson classic 19-point performance from the boot, high-scoring matchup. I mean, not what we saw in in this game. Unfortunately, he only uh, he only kicked, I believe, uh, two conversions um, in yeah. that match, so only racked up three fantasy points. So, guys that had Peterson in his lineup paid for five dollars for him. Don't even get him for the rest of the playoff challenge, and he only put up three fantasy points. Going to be a tough one to carry that slack yeah. throughout. But hey, who knows if uh, Bodine Walker can kind of cut the slack for the guys that went with that double five dollar stack there in the scrum half fly half and in the back three center position should be uh, should be interesting and then on the Seattle Seawolf side we mentioned it this is why Matt is sitting at the top of the rankings he went with AJ Alatimu he pulled through 13 and a half fantasy points getting a try assist a lot of those points coming from the tee kicking five penalties three conversions I mean you really can't ask for any better performance and he still got a guaranteed next match to play uh yeah Pretty, pretty big, big uh, lineup decision there for you, Matt, which uh, went a long way, obviously. Other big try scorers, Duncan Matthews. He seems to be able to find some open space here. When you give him that yeah. space, he seems to turn on the Jets. Uh, he scored uh, a big try uh, a big try in that match and also uh, assisting on, uh, on, on another one as well. He uh, was able to get 9.3 fantasy points. Ross Neal, 7.6 fantasy points. Sam Matanga, 5.7. And then Travis Larson, 6.1 as well on, uh, on the Seattle side. So a lot more more fantasy scoring there in that Seattle Seawolf San Diego Legion side which is obviously what we'd like to see but nonetheless had a significant impact in both matches on the fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge lineups and it'll be interesting we got we got some exciting matchups now coming up in this uh in this conference final which we'll break down now but any final thoughts on this past eliminator round guys no I mean I think uh I think this was we predicted exactly how this was going to end up and I think now it gets interesting because now, yeah, it's, now it gets tough. You know, now now it's tough to make these picks. Uh, it's tough, you know, who you're gonna who you're gonna who you have on your team, like in that fantasy rocker playoff challenge. Um, this is where it starts to really matter. Nobody's on by. Everybody's playing. That's in it. Uh, it's this one's gonna be this one's gonna be a good weekend. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this past Eliminator round, we had guys, like you mentioned, Matt, that were had lineups that had people playing, had lineups that no one was playing because yeah. of that buy. Yeah, everyone after this conference final is going to have at least one match played for every single one of their players that they selected in their Fantasy Rutgers Playoff Challenge, which is going to shake up the rankings. The, that pretty 24 points that is up there at the top spot for Matt is may not be enough points. if he doesn't add anything uh, with a lot of these lineups that have a lot of the ability to get a lot of of, uh, a lot of points especially if you're banking on a on a certain team if that team uh if that team has a good week you may be cashing in on a lot of the points so let's talk about those line uh those matchups that are going to have an impact on this challenge this upcoming week in the conference final so we mentioned it rugby new york beating rugby atlanta we have the uh, seattle seawolves beating the san diego legion so the legion will now face or excuse me the seattle seawolves will now face the houston saber cats in the western conference final and then we have rugby new york taking on the new england free jacks in the eastern conference final which is to say the least should be a very very exciting matchup we got on saturday starting it off with the houston saber cats and the seattle seawolves so we'll break this one down first guys Honestly, what Houston has been doing so far, especially at the tail end of the season, to make their push in the fantasy playoff or to make their push into the MLR playoffs was impressive. The turnaround all the way back from Matthews, uh, Matthews rant on the Houston Sabercats to where they are now. I don't know if it provided any extra motivation for their team. I don't know if any Houston Sabercats are nice listening to, to this podcast. Listening. They played it before every game. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's so. in the locker room. Just... So. Right. You know what? Um, if you're watching... Just bring me in next game. Just bring me in. <laughs> bring I'll, me I'll in. say it to your face. I won't, but I'll I'll, I'll, I'll say it behind the camera as if I'll say yeah. it to your face. Um, and then obviously we talked about the Seattle Seawolves also making this late season push and obviously having that championship pedigree with their experience in these playoff matches. Man, it. I want to say it's an easy pick here going with the Seattle Seawolves, and we mentioned we that was part of our predictions in the last show. Uh, 
but it may it may be a facade man this houston sabercats team i think is going to put up a, a decent fight here and i know vandy probably believes it too or at least is hoping for it having both dean muir and the houston sabercats in his fantasy records playoff challenge lineup uh, matt i'll start with you easy one for seattle competitive one houston sabercats come away with the win on this one what are you thinking here i mean you know i'm again I picked, I picked accordingly. I feel like the the Seattle Seahawks are going to come away with the win. But I don't think it's going to be like last week. I think it's going to be a tight one. I think it's going to come down to the wire. Um, you know, Houston has shown that they can put up points. Uh, they definitely have shown that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think Seattle Seahawks experience, you know, Houston has never been here before. Um, Seattle Seahawks kind of know what playoff rugby is like because playoff rugby is a whole different breed. Um so they have the experience, you know, they have, they have the ability to score tries. I think they can, they can pull, pull out the win on this one. Yeah. What about you, Vandy? You, uh, you. Completely the opposite. I'm staying with what I said last week. All right. Houston. All right. No. Well, how much, so okay. Hold on. Vandy. How much, how much did Steven pay you to, uh, to, to, to a slide lot. here with the this Houston Saber Cats? Uh, I don't jersey. know. That's how much. I don't know. A couple <laughs> bucks. Yeah, well, one hey, jersey. One, bucks. one jersey, please. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, what were you uh, saying? <laughs> no, man. Uh, I did a little. I looked up the actually the weather that it's supposed to be, and it's supposed oh. to be terribly You're hot. A big weather guy. <laughs> and usually that game would be held at eight o'clock. I guess it got moved to six now because Fox News pushed them to six. So they're going to be playing in a pretty hot Houston. So who's going to be good at that? Well, the guys that train in it every day. Oh, they got so water. I think that's going to be a huge minutes, advantage. So really Reichert Hatting is going to need the adrenaline thing that Matt's been talking about. <laughs> Juice him up. Not going to be enough. Dean Moore, your three tries incoming. There we go. Well, yeah, it should, it should be a fun one. Yeah, though, I think there'll be a lot of key names. Obviously, in the Fantasy Rockers Playoff Challenge, people will keep an eye on AJ Alatimu because he obviously came out with that big performance. But yeah, you mentioned it, Vandy. We're now going to add these Houston guys in this uh, in this side too. You got Dean Muir. Uh, you got a lot of guys that uh, that picked some Houston guys. Uh, a lot of front rowers. Juan Pablo Zeiss people are banking on. Um, you know, Christian Dyer is a selection among them as well. So yeah, we, we, we got some, some selections here on the Houston side that will make a pretty big impact here in the fantasy records playoff challenge let's shift over there to the eastern conference final which i think a lot of people have marked on their calendars because i think for a lot of people as well this is the mlr final in their eyes at least for me it is i think this is the two best teams that are remaining in the uh in the mlr championship series it's unfortunate that they're both on the Eastern Conference side. Now, I will say, after Seattle's performance last week, it is harder to say that because I think that X factor that Seattle has is pushing them closer to being more competitive with Rugby New York, I should say. But nonetheless, it's going to be a competitive matchup on Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern between two of the teams that thought were going to be at the top of the Eastern Conference at the, top, uh, at the start of the season. They're sitting here now at the end of the season as finalists in their conference finals. What do you got here? I think we're both banking on Rugby New York, but I don't think it's going to be an easy one for Rugby New York because we do have Bodie and Waka and the Free Jacks on the other side. Look, and and I look, I, I've got New York picked, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the team that can deal with the the, the line speed and deal with uh, figure out how to beat the line speed. And I'm going to make a call that if Sam Windsor starts for New York, um, I think that I think that New York wins uh, for sure. I just think that Sam Windsor understands that he has to put the ball behind in order to, 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 to slow down the line speed. Um, but yeah, New York showed that they can come up with line speed last game. New England Free Jacks in previous games against New York have come up with that kind of, uh, kind of that center line speed center blitz. Um, so it'll be the team that really figures out how to how to beat that and how to get the ball out wide and and get it past uh, the centers. Um, and build phases and really put the other team on the back foot that's going to win this game. Uh, but, yeah, I'm still going rugby New York. Still think they got way too much class. Even without Fidel, they got Cole on that wing that is, you know, has shown that he's he's class, all class. Yeah. What about you, Vanny? Going, uh, I'm going with the Free Jacks. Pretty sure I said it last week, too. Oh. Very sure I said it last week. But you know what? I, I just think – that team's got so much talent, so much skill. I, I mean, you could say the same thing about the rugby New York yeah. side, but I think, in my opinion, the front pack for New England is stronger. I, I think that that's going to be a lot tougher for them to stop. It's kind of like a dual-headed threat. 
And then you got a guy like if you got him pinned in, Bodine Walker can make that kick to stretch, you know, Mitch Wilson or somebody else and can really stretch that field. And I think right there, volatile mixture. I mean, same argument for rugby New York, but I just I like New England more in this. Yeah. And I mean, I will say the thing because I chose rugby New York in this one. And and I will say a lot of that is based off of the the potential that I feel that rugby New York can have. I mean, they haven't pieced it together yet because obviously they had a lot of incoming late players. But it's the potential when I see a lineup that includes Wysocki Nahalo, uh, Nehe Milner Scudder, Andrew Coe, Ed Fido, um, if he does return from injury. They're just that lineup alone. And, you, and then you add Sam Windsor, uh, Fuatai, Emery, all those names. But the thing that gives me pause there with this match and what gets me worried that of not so of not being so confident in my rugby New York pick is that we've seen the explosive play ability by this New England Free Jacks team all season long. And that gives them such a big upper edge in terms of if this is a close matchup, if this is a back and forth thing, if this is something where they need to keep up with each other, just getting that one big play, that one break um, to get up top and to, to, to put yourself and give you that extra edge. I do think New England has shown it more and has given me that extra trust in their ability to do that. I feel like with Rugby New York, it's still the what if, you know what I mean? Like, I know that Wysocki Nahal is a good player. I know that Nehe Milner Scudder is a good player. We've seen it from Ed Fido, obviously, who who uh, who you know has had multi try performances all season long. But I feel like we haven't seen that co- cohesive team with Rugby New York yet, and it's just on paper that is really giving us this like, oh my gosh, like they can do this, which gives me pause because we've seen it from New England Free Jacks, and I feel like maybe we're not giving the team that has shown it all season long enough respect. But nonetheless, I got to stick with my uh, my Rugby New York pick here, and I, I do think that. This, we'll see first glimpses of a trio, whether that's, you know, Fidao, Scudder, uh, Nehem Lerner, Scudder, and, and Wysocki Nahalo, or you throw Co in there, or what have you. I do think this is going to be the first week that we do see kind of a co- cohesive imp- uh, performance from all three of those players that's going to have a huge impact in this match. That's why you brought them over here. Four matches like these, so we'll see whether or not they can do it against the, uh, the New England Free Jacks. But... Some interesting tidbits uh, for us to wrap up at least this portion of the show. Um, we got, uh, you know, we mentioned Rugby New York was the most selected side. Some uh, some teams that are now coming into this conference final week. New England Free Jacks, they had eight p- uh, p- different players selected in uh, challenge lineups. Houston coming in with six, uh, six players being selected. So obviously those are an additional uh, significant number of players that are now going to be putting up points for these fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge lineups. Interesting tidbits, some fun facts. Uh, 20 22 Eastern Conference players selected versus 13 Western Conference players. And then, uh, just because we had to throw the tip in there, Bodine Waka was selected on more than 80% of all lineups that were submitted in this challenge. The next one coming in, <laughs> the next one coming in was the Seattle Seawolves set piece at under 40%. So that just goes to show you how much people think that Bodine Waka is going to have an impact in this uh, Fantasy Rockers playoff challenge. I will say the number one lineup as of right now which is going to yours truly, Matt Yee, does not oh my God. have Bodine Waka in the lineup right now. I didn't we'll even see have to say or not, we'll, we'll see whether or not uh, that, that decision uh, sticks through here for uh, for the rest of the few weeks. But hey, any uh, any final thoughts here, guys, on uh, the cha- conference final series that we're going to have this weekend? It's going to be an exciting one. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Because that map makes me sick to my stomach. Hey, 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 but do you know what? If I make you sick to the stomach, the rugby this weekend, oh, it'll make you feel better because it's going to be a good one this weekend, boys. <laughs> Nice, nice. That was good, Matt. Really, really Thanks. good. All right. Thanks. Well, with that yeah, being said, we, <laughs> we, hey, what are you we, teased, <laughs> <laughs> we teased it at the top of the show. We got a special guest joining the show. Uh, we wanted to mention to him uh, when we did have the interview with him yesterday, he did just get selected to his very first Canadian side, and that is Jack McRogers, the try scoring machine, leading the arrows all season long with six tries. We got to be able to have a conversation with him yesterday, so have a listen to the interview that you've all been waiting for. We have a very special guest on the show, and I, and I leaked this out on to- show social media when I sent out the update of our Fantasy Ruckers Challenge. I said, hint, we got a special guest on today's show. I put a Canadian flag... I put an arrow 
and then I said, try scoring machine. Mm -hmm. And I think there's only one guy that we know of that matches up with all those different types of things. New Market, Ontario, born and bred. Maddie's favorite teammate that he's ever been with and the try scoring leader for the Toronto Arrows. Let's bring on Jack Woo! McRogers. Jack, thank you for joining the show, man. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, no, we're uh, we're glad that you could take some time here to talk a little bit about the MLR and man. We mentioned it, dude, in, in that introduction. You were able oh. to find the try line this season. You had a freaking successful year, dude. It seems like you were really mauling, bashing. Vanny was loving you. He had you on his fantasy oh, yeah. team for a little bit there. Dude, you why know, don't you just tell us about how uh, the 2022 season was like for you, dude? On, Jack. You know, you know what? I just wanted to say quickly with that intro, you know, about halfway through that, I could have easily thought that we were going to bring up Andrew Quatrin. Both <laughs> Newmarket natives, both hookers, you know. Both been try scoring machines, but no, we got we got the one and only old Jack McRogers here on the show. But but yeah, um, I guess to, just sorry to interrupt you, Ryan. But yeah, to follow up, I guess how's the season going? No, hey, no, it's all fairness, man. I will say, Jack, in the fantasy season, before you get into kind of how this 2022 year was for you, it was Matt. Despite how uh, he says, you know, you're one of the best teammates he's ever played with, and all these things, all he right. was flipping and flopping between all you right. and Andrew Quadrin for that Toronto hooker spot all season long, and he was playing that fine line, that game between you and him, and then he ended up dropping you, and Vandy was not gonna let he you kind of sleep. Like right <laughs> Scooped him up, baby. <laughs> Scooped you right up, and you were you were a hot, hot commodity for uh, Vandy picking you up late in the season, especially with his push late in the year. But man, 2022 year, it was, uh, it was a fun one for you, it seems. Yeah, I was just on the back of the mall. I was just a lucky guy there. Uh, I guess for the fantasy points, it doesn't really matter how they come, though, eh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I saw that one uh, that one week, Matt, you dropped me. And I was like, all right. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. That out. Yeah, that's right. Come on. You know what? You know how many times I every week I was messaging Vandy saying, hey, I'll get I'll I'll give you this guy for for Mick Rogers back. I'll give you this guy for Jack back. Can I have my boy back, please? Pretty please. He, and he just he wouldn't. He can't he even tell you what I was saying back to him. We're not even gonna say it on air. He wouldn't yeah, give nice. it. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was a fun. Getting, yeah, it was a fun little competition between uh, between Matty and Vandy. You were, you were a hot commodity between the two, man. They were trying to court you. They were trying to get you on their squad. But, uh, yeah, it ended up just Vandy getting the best of it. But why don't you talk on – not so much from a fantasy perspective, Jack, but from just, I guess, a rugby perspective. You know, the Toronto Arrows seemed like you guys – it was obviously a tough stretch heading into the season for you guys, having been playing away from home with the whole COVID-19 pandemic stuff going on. And then, obviously, you finally get that first match a few weeks into the season back in Toronto. You guys seem to be rolling at home and anyone who was coming through uh york university stadium was absolutely not having a good time traveling there because it seemed like you were just so dominant when you're on home soil why don't you just talk about kind of you know being back at home finally being able to play in front of a home crowd and you know how much that uh contributed to the success that the arrows saw in the 2022 season yeah uh this year after like living away in atlanta for that that full season like this year was kind of about like just getting back to it and like really breath of fresh air. Like, man, like we love doing this. And then that first game at home, all the boys were so excited not to have to get on a plane or like to have your family out and like have your home crowd. It, it was like, honestly, it was like Christmas morning in front of your own people and having like a crowd there. It, it was like honestly indescribable. Uh, and then we picked up uh, a bit of a season of highs, highs and lows. Yeah, we went on a bit of a roll at home. Uh, and then we dropped a, uh, I think a tough one to New York, finished eight and eight, uh, which is a bit frustrating. I think we were a bit better than we showed. Um, but yeah, certainly just from like a team perspective, like got on with all the boys so well this year and like just such good chemistry. And I think we are building for next year. Uh, so yeah. You guys look like a completely different team at home. It was crazy. I can't even, can't even imagine what it was like probably playing in front of, you know, family playing in front of your dad, your mom your sister stuff like that uh must have been awesome but i feel like that extra adrenaline kick too just does so much like i've never gotten to play in front of a crowd like that but man i can only assume like that's it'd be incredible and and your stadium seems like it's a pretty solid venue too man like i haven't been there i haven't seen one of your guys matches there but it seems like on top of you guys just being at home too it seems like york u seems to be kind of a right fit for you guys as well yeah york, york is great Big old like grandstand. The field yeah. is nice and wide. We're just playing side to side. Uh, yeah, can really take advantage of that uh, that hooker Regarding speed, right, Jack? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like <laughs> lineman jog. 
Uh, yeah, good beer garden in the end zones too. York is hey. great. Yeah, I mean it's it's great to great to know that you guys finally found a home and, and hopefully you guys are there for a while. So so it's all yeah, that's always yeah, nice absolutely. to see. Now shifting over here, Jack. So we talked about the campaign and we're trying to kind of, you know, look ahead here, guys. So you're looking ahead to, I guess, now the 2023 season. Um, you guys are so close. You mentioned, I mean, you guys don't feel like necessarily that eight and eight record is indicative of kind of how you guys perform throughout the 2022 campaign. But looking ahead to 2023, is there anything from a strategic standpoint or anything that you guys feel like you need to kind of shape up heading into next season? I know you guys relied heavily, obviously, on that set piece. You guys having a lot of success there. You you being one of the big uh, big benefactors of that scoring six tries this year and leading the Toronto Arrows with that. I will say, I feel like you could have snuck in a few more, Jack. In that last match, I feel like they were doing Paul Cellini a little bit of a favor on those set-piece plays in his 50th cap, and they were kind of setting that up. I don't know if that was part of the game plan. You can correct me if I was wrong, because I feel like you kind of <laughs> scooped there on the back there, and you might have been able, if he passed you back, you might have been able to add to your try total there, but I think you guys were all doing a Cellini a favor. But nonetheless, though, is that kind of a focus that you guys are emphasizing you know for years to come i know a lot of our fantasy uh fantasy rugby uh players will want to or will be listening and interested in how much of an emphasis that's going to continue to be as part of the toronto arrows or is there something that you guys are looking to change up in seasons to come that, that's so funny you notice like the uh the ball getting two tries there because that play that, that play is designed to go to me a meter yeah. from the line and like technically it's my job to rip the ball there and i was right. yelling at paul like keep it keep it keep it <laughs> Jack, you're, too, you're too selfless man you gotta take those you gotta you know you gotta take those for your yeah you know what i could have used in. the points vandy, too vandy over here was struggling because yeah i could take use those the point. And put them in you guys didn't yeah. take Cellini on his 50th? He hey, had two you gotta, tries. You got to let us know next time when you guys are doing <laughs> setting up plays for him to score a double. So, you know, maybe maybe give hey. the boys a little bit of a hint that you guys are running those for him. Yeah, but no, that, that was... not like insider trading or something? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, I'll say... We won't call dude, it that. Honestly, in our league, we've had guys reach out to other players in the league. Like one of our league members, Steven, he's, uh, he was trying to figure out whether or not to put Connor Mooneyham in his lineup. So he literally shot Mooneyham a, a message on Instagram. He was like, hey, man, are you starting this weekend? And he shot him a message back. He's like, yeah, I am. Uh, you, you can play me in the lineup. And he's like, all right, sweet. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. and we, we, always, we, we always joke about it because imagine, I don't know, Jack, how much you play like fantasy football or any other fantasy sports. But imagine, you know, texting up, you know, uh, <laughs> like a quarterback in the NFL and be like, hey, man, you, uh, you get to go this weekend i just want to make sure so i can set my fantasy lineup it's kind of like the same deal but i guess that's just the lucky uh the lucky yes. connections that we have here in the mlr jack yeah, i messaged awesome. i messaged mike and he gave me the cold shoulder he straight up just <laughs> oh, yeah. said he straight up said yeah you'll find out in the lineup announcement won't you i said well well all right then all right there mike yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's work what, for everyone. Yeah, yeah. What we've learned though from what Cheers, we've learned Nick. from all of the guests that we've had on our show, Jack, is that when we reach out to these guys and try to get an inside scoop, sometimes they're a little bit more uh, more precious with the uh, the close uh, stats and a little bit hold that a little bit close to heart. But nonetheless, it's been a, a fun year. But speaking of fantasy rugby, though, uh, Jack, we want to get your opinion on it because that's kind of the main question that we ask a lot of the players that come through this podcast because it's a rare opportunity, kind of like how we mentioned here, how to have someone like you come on our show to actually talk about fantasy rugby is pretty interesting to us so as a player and whether or not you do play fantasy sports outside of rugby what's kind of your thought about people kind of relying on your stats now not really just following you along just because they're a toronto arrows fan but because let's say someone like vandy has stake in you and it's like damn i need jack mcrogers to score me a try this weekend what is that kind of feeling as a player knowing that that's something that could be a possibility like other sports yeah I uh, I played probably my first like fantasy league last year, like the Six Nations fantasy. Okay. And it was like a ton of fun, and like I totally bought into like not even cheering for teams, but like so invested in it. So I am all for it, especially in like MLR where you guys have that connections, and like sometimes it's like uh, a friend playing or it's just a random guy, and like you got to make that decision and like get to know more players around the league. Uh, I'm all for it. Uh, if I wasn't playing, I'd probably set up a profile. And honestly, my mom would probably like playing fantasy rugby. Hey, <laughs> there, hey, we, there go. we go. Hey, it's for anyone to join in. We're still trying to grow this thing. So, you know, whether you're a mom Here. watching your son play on the Toronto Arrows or if you're just a guy that wants to go out on a Sunday, grab some beers and, and watch fantasy uh, rugby or watch the MLR in a different way. That's kind of how you can kind of digest this whole fantasy rugby thing. But, yeah, it, I think it's cool, man. I think w what we're thinking here is that I think a lot of people are finding that, you know, there's other ways to kind of enjoy rugby and enjoy the MLR 
MLR and the amount of ways and opportunities. I mean, I don't know how much you've watched the Rugby Network broadcast, but them starting to integrate, you know, these little trivia sports betting, you know, just different ways to get people involved and engaged and stuff like that. So I think fantasy rugby can add that sort of element, especially with the MLR as it continues to try to grow here on out. A couple more things here, Jack, before you head out here, I want to ask you a few more questions. And one thing that we want to uh, to ask you here as well, uh, we needed to fit this in here. It's not an MLR question. It isn't a fantasy rugby question, but we've been trying to get you on the show for so long, but we usually record this podcast on Tuesdays, right? And the thing is, is that you're tied up with something on Tuesdays, and that's uh, that's coaching a particular team that Matt and I have had uh, some experience with in the past. And you've taken on the reins here of coaching the Aurora Barbarians. And I want to ask you, man, how's the Marshall Premiership doing? I haven't I haven't checked on that league in quite a while. Matt and I both uh, both Markham Irish boys at heart. So seeing that you're uh, competing with the the uh, the Aurora Barbarians, it's cool to hear that you're coaching and, and giving back to the community. Yeah, I've uh, I've been really enjoying my coaching. It's been challenging. It's been good. Uh, I feel like I owe the Barbs a lot, though. I've played there since like I was a U twelve. Unfortunately, like, it, it feels good to like go out, get some knowledge, and bring it back and really help those boys. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, the league the league's been really competitive. Uh, we had a tough loss to Scottish and Balmy Beach, but like the league's been really competitive. I've been impressed with quality of play <laughs> and like our twos team. This year is pretty much awesome. Like that bodes really well uh, for the future, and it's kind of like a bit of a slow build after COVID. Uh, but like more and more guys are coming out, and more and more guys are getting back into the game. Yeah, it, it's been awesome. It's been good fun. Uh, it's been pretty challenging for myself. Any arrows, boys? You lure back to the Barbarians to play for them or anything like that? Or are you going to become a player coach at some point this season, or what? Uh, all those questions are kind of up in the air. We'll probably figure that out. The next couple of uh, weeks, uh, I know Quatrain. Oh, 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 what are you play, and Quatrain going to do when you're both when you're both at the same position? I guess you'll have to play nine, eh? <laughs> I don't think I don't think that would be fair. I would I would not be wanting lining up against Jack Rogers in the Marshall. No, I, I would not. And he and, and by the way, he looks smaller on camera than he is in person. He looks way bigger in person. I saw him. I saw him a few weeks ago. Holy! We almost got you boots. You almost were a barb right there. Oh, come on. I can never be a barb. I'm, I'm an Irish for life. Irish boy at heart. I don't know if you can see the jersey up here, but I had to rep it. I had to hang it up here. I had to put the Irish jersey up there because uh, with a little bit of barbs, we can't go too much barb stuff. We got to keep the Irish in there as well because, uh, no, I definitely have uh, have certain feelings towards uh, towards your club there, especially pay- playing them so much in the past um, during the playing oh, yeah. days. But I will hey, say, Jack. though, Jack, I want to ask you, you being both a coach for the barbs and then you also, I guess, having the experiences in the MLR, how much of a connection or how big of a part do you think those kind of amateur leagues that have been in place for such a long time are going to have an effect on professional rugby in North America? I know that the Toronto Arrows have, you know, the the academy system and you guys have that kind of youth uh, development system that you guys put together to, in order to f- kind of fast track certain talent and certain rugby talent through the arrows program and into your uh, professional squad. But I guess, you know, clubs like the Aurora barbarians clubs like the Markham Irish who, you know, don't necessarily have that affiliation, but obviously there are good players that play in these leagues um, that have the potential maybe to have, you know, a shot. I mean, you're seeing guys in the league, uh, you've played for the barbs. Johnny Sheridan has played for the Irish. You see guys that have, you know, these martial ties. How big do you think that amateur style club rugby is going to play a part in the development and growth? Both of MLR as a whole, not even just the Toronto Arrows. Yeah, it's it's huge. Like you you named a couple there, but like a couple of Bombay Beach boys and like yep. more. Uh, so I also think like with uh, the league getting better and better, like the overall quality of play, uh, you're gonna have to find club rugby players because you can only field so many internationals. So it's gonna right. play such a huge role. And like I was I was even talking like going to help out with the back line and like. For those players to see a guy like a Sherry come out, like it's also something to like work towards and like club rugby isn't just like a means to an ends anymore. I think it's awesome that there's like another shot and like even uh, I know like he goes out and like he's not just there for a beer and to watch the game. He's like looking for guys that could get into the academy, could make it on the arrows and like he's looking like who is the potential size and like skill we can develop. Or like vice versa, who has the right skills and just is missing a few like tools can be huge, especially with like the cap on how many international players. 
you're gonna like rely on club rugby and local guys and like i think scouting is going to be even a little more important so i think it's awesome club hey, rugby Randy, is just like a part of the pathway Vandy, time to get involved in a club buddy yeah, yeah dude. So, <laughs> so uh Jack, uh Vandy chose. We had the people choose what team this guy would uh be his favorite team and and the people chose at the start of the season that he was going to like the uh Warrior. the Utah Warriors. Um uh, this is also a guy that lives in Tilsonburg, Tilsonburg, Ontario. He should be cheering for the Arrows, but the people <laughs> the people chose Utah Warriors for him. And we've said there's a running joke on the show. So Vandy loves to watch Mike Teo and all these guys and we're saying, "Hey That's man, right. You're not far off, dude. We can start getting you trained up and we can have you running at fullback in no time. So him being there, he loves to hear that there can be there's a chance. He just got to sign himself up, get his registration in with Rugby Canada, Mm -hmm. head on over to the local club. And Vandy, in no time, the arrows are going to hear about you and you'll be running fullback right along with Jack. And you'll be the try scoring leader, dude. You know what? That sounds like a great timeline. You know what? Maybe I'll just try it, you know, next season. (laughs) Yeah. Then you should. We'll get you a jersey. I'll drop the name. I'll come out. I'll something. come out. There you I'll go. To Utah at home. All the second favorite team. You can do that. <laughs> Imagine. Oh my gosh, that'd be uh, that'd be funny. Yeah, I think a uh, live we've heard, stream. We've actually proven it, Jack. <laughs> hey, I'll live stream it, boys. We actually we we actually <laughs> proved that that ja- uh, that uh, that Vandy has a uh, a forty dash time like a like a yeah. four second forty dash time. So that <laughs> wide field that yeah. you're talking about, Jack at Yorkie Stadium, is only going to play in Vandy's favor, man. He's going. <laughs> oh yeah. He's going to keep on oh, working. Yeah. Um, Once this barrel yeah, gets moving, it don't stop, man. Test. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. It's all I, it's all about momentum, there, Vandy. It's all about momentum. <laughs> exactly. You know what, I don't exactly. even know if it's like if I'm even that fast or if my gut's just pulling me forward. Right. It's just the Called inertia. Called inertia. Yeah, that's physics to its finest. Rugby physics yeah, to its go. finest. But uh yeah, Jack, man, really appreciate you hopping on here, talking a little bit about your insight into uh into the league and also kind of how you've heard about this fantasy rugby thing because yeah. it is uh it is cool to kind of see that we do have some of the support of the uh the players around the league and we see you uh commenting. I think you saw your name as one of the top performers in one of the weeks and you said, Hey, tagging Maddie, and you're like, Hell yeah, I'm I'm contributing hey, that's, to that. That's, so that's the glory days when I had him. Yeah, that, that was the glory. So, uh, no, it, it's it's cool to see that. And we're, we're just hoping to help give people another avenue to digest this whole Major League Rugby thing because it is a blast to watch you guys. I mean, we were following the arrows all season long and to see, you know, how much fun you guys are having out there on the pitch and seeing you guys being able to do it finally professionally now because, of Jack, I know how long and Matt knows how long you've been in this game and how long you've been, you know, grinding and yeah. trying to make it up the ladder here and uh, to finally see that that's kind of paying dues here with the professional league and with that opportunity opportunity and and uh it's really really cool so we hope to and, bring more fans hey, to before, see that before you drop off i just want to say thank you jack for for not sticking with with playing nine um you <laughs> allowed me to finally have you know actually get a position and not have to compete w- with you uh so yeah just just wanted to say thank you for for moving from nine to flanker and then from flanker to hooker you got farther and farther away from me and i was just happy that i didn't need to compete with you anymore so you uh you made you made my rugby career possible and uh and yeah Man, and now i'm retired so that's how it is no thank you i, I couldn't really play nine like if i can't spin left handed it's a bit of an issue so uh yeah, yeah, whatever no, don't thank you, don't, don't be humble over there. <laughs> don't be humble over there. we all know you're you're gonna blow me out of the water you just decided to give me a break and that's why Matt told me that you're his favorite teammate, right? <laughs> exactly. There we go. <laughs> well, hey, there we go, uh, Jack. Really appreciate you hopping on the show here, man. Appreciate you uh, giving all the support here towards the Fantasy Rutgers, man. And good luck this offseason. Enjoy it. Take that well-needed time off and, and rest up. And we're, we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing you in the 2023 year, scoring a lot more tries for the Toronto Arrows. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, and I'll keep following on the, the Instagram, Fantasy Rutgers. Best oh, of luck yeah. in the playoffs. Appreciate it, dude. Thank Thanks, you, Jack. Jackie. See you, buddy. Hey, cheers, man. Once again, thank you to Jack McRogers for uh, joining us on the Fantasy Rugger Show. A lot of cool things that, uh, yeah, a lot of cool things that he mentioned there. I mean, we talked uh, a little bit about uh, how he feels with uh, Fantasy Rugby being in the MLR. But the coolest thing was, I think, uh, his realization that we noticed what the Toronto Arrows were doing with uh, with Paul Cellini in his 50th cap, uh, sneaking him to try there. We heard from Jack saying that, hey, he wanted him to keep it. And knowing the good guy that Jack is, uh, there was no 
no question in his in his body that he was going to allow Cellini to get that moment of glory. Look, look, it just told me that any time a Toronto <laughs> player is having their fiftieth cap, all right, you pick them up. Him. You pick them Bet up. You pick it. guys playing the Dallas Jackals. You pick guys on the arrows that are getting their 50th cap because you know that Jack McRogers, good guy Jack McRogers, is going to get that guy into the try zone. That's just how it is. You know what? I'm working on my first cap, boys. I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, you I'm are. I'm going to drive down to Toronto. I'm going to get in that open workout. I'm going to impress the masses. You're going to impress I Coach McRogers. Maybe, maybe I'll be a hooker or something. I don't know. You're going to impress Coach Probably McRogers. Coach McRogers is going to pull you into the squad. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're at your hundredth cap in the MLR. You know, just a legend. And we're, and we're picking, game. we're picking you up, Vandy. We're like, oh, Vandy's got his fiftieth cap coming up. He's going to score yeah. a multi-try game. But yeah, I will say, uh, uh, Jack at least gave the inkling of a possibility that we go, we at least have a track for you, Vandy, of how you could make the MLR. On whether or not that is an actual possibility is a whole nother story, but at least there is a clear-cut pathway, and that pathway seems to be through the Aurora Barbarians, as much as I want to say, and I don't want you playing for the Barbs, being a uh, being a Markham Irish boy, um, both Matt and I um, at heart, like we mentioned in that interview, maybe the road of Vandy's MLR bid is through the Aurora Barbarians. Let's get him Let's get him a, a jersey. He's got the Utah Warriors jersey. Just got to get him some boots now, and he'll uh, he'll maybe be the. Uh, he, he could t- he could tell you a few tricks, right? Jack could tell you a few tricks about being a, a successful hey, hooker. And you know, you know what that. I say to all of this? Just like, you know what I need? I don't need to know how to no. play the game. You know, playing the game is the first no. step. I need to know. I need to know the cheeky stuff. Mm. How do you slip this in? How do you gut punch without the yeah. ref seeing? How do you step on some toes? Yeah. Can you bend a fin- finger back here? Yeah. Like that's the stuff you need to yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Nail, nail on the head. Um, that's all you need. Football is got it, man. Hey, you just run and hit the quarterback. It's getting to him. That's yeah, where the yeah, tricks yeah. come in. The You're uppercuts, right. the swim. Yeah. The there we go. You're so right. in the. In, in the meantime, we'll get a list going for you. I know Matt knows a few of those tricks, being mm-hmm. a, a longtime scrum yeah. half and but usually then again, scrum half. I am right now, so. <laughs> hey, you got a yeah, little help from Jack just, there. Uh, you can't handle the pain anymore. You got uh, a little help from Jack down. there, Matt, uh, shifting uh, his position switch from uh, scrum half to hooker. So yeah, at least uh, he helped you along a little bit there. The so. fantasy rugby season gave me enough pain, so I'm still feeling it. But there we there hey, we go. Just like just like fantasy rugby in the MLR. Kevin Garnett said it best, Vandy. Anything is possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> Anything, is possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> there you go. Anything is possible. That, that you know, that's a good message to leave the people on, Matt. That, that's that's really optimistic, and that's what you're thinking with your uh, your fantasy Rutgers playoff challenge lineup too, eh? Heading into the next week. Keep bringing to keep it up. up. I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start getting ahead of myself if you keep bringing this up. All right. Oh, all right. right. Go, I got to leave it at that. All right. I get I'm gonna go past this camera screen. Let's hurry up and close. <laughs> all all right. right. I'm, I'm cutting it off here. <laughs> I'm cutting it off here. If you aren't already, make sure you're following us. Make sure you subscribe to us at the Fantasy Ruckers on YouTube or where you ever get uh, your podcast at the Fantasy Ruckers on social media as well. You want to stay in tune for all things Fantasy Rugby in the MLR, and you'll be the first one to know if it is available for you to start playing Fantasy MLR as well. For Matt Yee, for Devin Vandy Vanderpool, I'm Ryan Yee, and we'll give you the latest update to that hashtag Fantasy Ruckers playoff challenge next week you've been listening to the fantasy ruckers show bringing fantasy rugby to the masses covering everything rugby from the mlr and beyond we hope you enjoyed the show make sure to like rate and review and be sure to tell all your friends we'll be back soon but in the meantime connect with us on social media at the fantasy ruckers till next time this is the fantasy ruckers show signing off